one thing that will really make your work sort of stick to the floor and, and, and really give it an idea of um, you know shape and depth is shadows most images are actually made up of people don't realize this but they're made up of areas of light and dark it's not just about edges and there's three types of shadows that we're going to talk about these are the main three types of shadows um, we're certainly with uh, with standard lighting and, di and direct lighting and they are shadow map ray trace shadows and area shadows now you can see we've got this rather um, simplified diagram in front of us of how a shadow map works and what we've got is our light source here casting rays into the scene and you can see we've got the cone of light there and what you have is um, applied to this cone of light is a grid now every ray of light that passes in between the grid just illuminates it doesn't do anything more it just illuminates but every ray of light that passes through the grid where two of the grid lines intersect becomes a shadow casting ray. So that means that those shadow casting rays, as they hit your object, you tend to get this sort of shadow that's rather square, you look like here. Now you won't see that in the render that I'm about to do, but that's how they work. Okay, so I'll minimize that down quickly. In my modify settings of my light, I'll turn on shadows, and we've got shadow map there. And then I just press render, render quickly, production render. And you see, actually, this looks quite smooth. It's very dark, but it does look quite smooth. If I were to go to my shadow parameters now, uh, sorry, no, my shadow map parameters, and I was to take that size down to maybe 64 and my sample range to 1, watch what happens now. This is exactly the type of shadow that I was talking about. You can see where each one of the lights or each one of the rays has gone through the shadow map because the shadow map was so large and it's created this rather strange looking shadow here. So the way that we make our shadows nice and smooth is we would maybe make these 1024. Again we're using power of 2 and I'll make my sample range 6. So the size of the shadow is how fine a detail you're putting in here. Yeah, and then the sample range is how blurred the edge is. So if we render this again, you can see we've got a nice, smooth, clean edge in there for our shadow. So that's a lot better. A couple of things we need to know about shadow maps, though. Uh, they are very, very quick. Um, we just explained the way that they work, but they don't respect transparency. So, for example, if I open up my materials editor, got my material here and I make it 20% transparent, so it's pretty much transparent here, and then I press render. What we've got is a very transparent, actually, you know what, that base, that's why that looks a bit odd. Let's put the base onto something different, there we go. That's better. Um, you've got an object that's very, very transparent, but the shadow that you're getting is really rather still quite solid. So we can see there, it doesn't respect transparency, so that's a downside for it. Good side is it is very, very quick. If I just make that completely solid now. Other things that you'll find with um, shadows is that that's very black. So what I'm going to do is I'll go to my light now. There we go. And I've got my shadow map there. I've maybe made this a little bit yellow. So I want it to be yellow. There we go. And we've got our shadow map set. But our shadow parameters. This is important. Density. Okay, we want to make the shadow look less black. There you go. We've done that by changing the density. Don't just change the colour. I've seen this happen more times than, than I can count. What happens is um, a new user will come in and they'll go, oh, we want to make the shadows look lighter. So they'll make it a lighter colour. What happens is that you get a really dense version of whatever colour you've just created. So if you make it grey, you just get a solid grey shadow. You've not made it lighter. You've not allowed the background material to come through. You've just made 
the shadow a different color and on a gray background like this yes that might work but to be honest with you in real life that's not how things go it's the density we want to worry about that's the important thing so that's shadow map parameters next one on our list is ray trace shadows now ray trace shadows take every single ray that's used from the light and use it to cast a shadow with so subsequently your shadows are super super fine they're very very accurate if I was doing an architectural render and it was going to be an exterior render I would definitely use these types of shadows because it means that every single object will have detail on it yeah so what we're looking for at, de at distance is areas of light and dark, areas of shadow, areas of not shadow. If you use a shadow map, you're going to blur out and mush out all your detail and just lose it, uh, which is no good to anyone. If you use a ray trace shadow, you're going to get that detail in there. So I'll get to ray trace shadows just by going uh, general parameters. From this drop down, I'll change to ray trace shadows and then I'll render. And what you'll see here is this super fine, super sharp detail on the shadow there really nice really clean really crisp like that a lot uh, we're still getting areas of dark here that's because that side of the um, the light the the teapot isn't being lit okay so don't worry about that for the moment we'll, we'll talk about lighting schemes in a little bit the next type of shadow i want to talk about and this looks like an even stranger um diagram is the area shadow now the area shadow is a hybrid between a shadow map and a ray trace shadow. And what you have is you've got your light cone that comes out here and that's the one that's creating the light and lighting all the objects. But the shadow is created from a grid which is separate to the light cone. So whereas with shadow maps, the this grid fitted inside of the light cone, with, a, with an area shadow, the, the, the shadow grid goes outside of the light cone. Okay, So from that grid, we then pass ray trace rays and I've only drawn two of them here that intersect with say the corner of the object now we'll have lots and lots of rays coming off from here and they create a scatter you see my rather strange wiggly line that I've drawn here this is the scatter for the shadow okay so what I'll do is I'll turn this to be uh, an area shadow and we'll call up area shadows here and really what I need to do now is just pull back a little way and for this to work properly, first of all, I need to find out how big this is. That's 4,000 by 4,000. Okay. So I will make the length and the width of my shadow. Uh, I'll make it 1,200. No. 1,200. By 1,200. Now, really, the reason why I did that was that if this is 4,000, if I've got 12, 1,200 up here, uh, it's going to give me a nice scatter. And we'll render that. This takes a little bit longer to render, but what you're going to see is you can see here that shadow is just dropping off here. We can see that already. Uh, and we can see here as well, the closer that it is, the more accurate it is, and the further away it is, the more scattered it is. Notice as well that because we don't have much in the way of integrity and quality, our shadow is breaking up and becoming noisy. Now, in an animation, if you don't address these problems, what will happen is you will end up with a, a shadow that looks like it's got noise on it and the, the noise is speckling like your television set does. Um, there are a lot of people who use other renderers like uh, V-Ray who think that you can set every single setting under the sun that will you know, sort of solve this problem. Oh, I, can, I can do this. It's absolute rubbish. All you actually need to do is to increase the number of subdivisions in the grid that's creating the shadow in the first place. As far as the scanline renderer is concerned, that's called shadow and um, um, shadow integrity and shadow quality. Once you start using mental ray, it's subdivisions. Okay, um, we'll talk about that again when we go to, to mental ray. But really, we'll go. We'll turn that to four. We'll turn this to seven. I'll press render again, and we'll have to wait for a few seconds. But really, what we're going to get is a lovely beautiful smooth accurate real life shadow that just looks a lot nicer than anything else that we've got but bear in mind i've got render time down here this took 11 seconds on my last frame okay and that was for an unacceptable shadow this is a more acceptable shadow it's a lot smoother it's a lot less grainy you can see that here that took 28 seconds 
Okay, 28 seconds, that's a long time just to have a nice looking shadow. Um, this machine isn't shabby, it's um, a single processor, 64 bit AMD running at 2.4 gigahertz, and I've got four gig of RAM in here as well. So it's kind of a bog standard workstation that you'd find kicking about anywhere nowadays. Um, really, you know, 28 seconds is quite a long time. As opposed to, if we just make that shadow map, I just press render. Yeah, that was about one second. So, you know, 27, 28 times longer in that instance. So do bear in mind that those are your three shadow types. I would use shadow map for quick, simple renders when I'm working to begin with and I'm trying to get my lighting scheme worked out. I would then use ray trace shadows for all architectural work and for anything that was going to be right in the foreground and was important or if I was doing a product shot, I would definitely use area shadow.